That wasn't really a black and white original, was it? <laughs> it, it, had no, it had no sound either. It had no sound either. I'm not that old. No, no, me either. It's all right. <laughs> well, that's kind of a fun look back at Bertha's time here at Denver Salmon. As some of you might have already uh, read and we've uh, talked about yesterday, Bertha's going to be leaving. It shouldn't come as a surprise. Going to serve her community she loves so much to become the next executive director of the Children's Diabetes Foundation. I think the best part about going back through some of these old videos is you'll notice some of the hairstyles have changed. Certainly. Some of the clothing <laughs> styles yeah, have maybe that. changed just a little bit. But I don't think you've aged a bit. No. You look just oh. as young as you did there in black and white, too. Mm. And, and, and we, we have more for you. Because here's another look back at Bertha's time right here at 7 News. Now, 7 News, Denver's best source of news and information, with Bertha Lynn, Jim Redmond. Long after the smoke clears, the fire on Storm King Mountain will be remembered as the deadliest Colorado firestorm. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Bertha Lynn. Every evening at 5 o'clock, we hope you'll join Bertha Lynn and Ernie Bjorkman for live, local, late-breaking coverage of Colorado news. After four days of speculation, the news nobody really wanted to hear became official today. The opening of Denver International Airport will be delayed for the fourth time. And we have video now of a bomb squad action. Well, we certainly do want to take you live out to Columbine High School right now where we will get live pictures from Air Tracker 7. The two suspected gunmen were found dead in the school library on the second floor and that they did have explosives on their persons. That's our job. If you want to win a popularity contest, ladies and gentlemen, do not go into journalism. Plus, Sam Donaldson. He's anything but shy. And we'll talk with him one-on-one -on -one to Night. So Meredith is not here, but Bertha Lynn is. And hey, Bertha. Bye. Hello, Bertha. Hello. It's nice to see you all in person. Watching you from Denver, it's quite different here. And good morning, Colorado. <laughs> Thank you for being here. A special welcome to all of our visitors from out of town, the delegates who are here for the Denver, yep. the Democratic National Convention. The so has there been really a major news story in the last, what, 30 years or so that you wow. haven't been a part of? Uh, certainly one of the more recognizable people in our state. And again, to be in this business, a tough business, a humbling business for more than 30 years, that's awesome. Oh, humbling for sure, because humbling what we do is live. <laughs> it, yeah. it is live, and yes, exactly. and there are many mistakes that take place, but yeah. the one thing you've always been constant on is just your um, willingness to give to the community. Yeah. So it is definitely no surprise that you were going to the Children's Diabetes Foundation. Big question is, what are you going to be doing with them? Oh, well, thank you, Dale. That's very sweet of you. First thing I'm going to do before arriving there at the Denver, uh, at the Children's Diabetes Foundation is to take some time off. I'm Not exhausted. Allowed. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but I'm going to be joining a wonderful team of professionals in the battle to try to eradicate diabetes. The Children's Diabetes Foundation supports the Barbara Davis Center for Diabetes. and uh, That is located on the Anschutz campus in, in Aurora. So I'm going from one team of wonderful journalism professionals to another team, again, in that battle to fight diabetes. A worthy cause. Yeah, yeah. They're, gonna get, they're getting a good person, that's for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to miss all of you. And it's just amazing. My hat's off to April Schultheimer, our illustrious producer here on the 7 News at 11, for digging up all those tapes. <laughs> I don't know how you found it. I forgot about half, uh, forgot about yeah. much of what we showed here today. I just wish I had all those suits back. That there would be <laughs> awesome. Exactly. All the you know, styles. And we all first learned about the news that Bertha is leaving, like so many of you, yesterday around noon. Yeah. And since then, thousands of you have emailed and posted messages on Facebook and Twitter and really letting everyone know how much Bertha will be missed. We have a few examples here. Bev Lawson writes, check this out, Bertha, you have brains and beauty. Best of luck in your new adventure. And take a look at this one. This is Rebecca Walden. She writes, she will always be a fond memory to me. When my terminally ill father became homebound, he faithfully watched Bertha and Ernie in the early afternoon, as did many people at that time. <laughs> he would say he was watching Bert and Ernie when I'd come in and check in on him at lunch, and that memory still brings a smile to my face. And Ben Beebe says, I cannot remember what the news in Denver looked like without you, Bertha. How about that? <laughs> and Peggy Swiftway says, more than 30 years? My goodness, she must have started when she was about three years old. You know, it's funny Peggy says that because my wife, Gina, she says that you look great every day. She's 
says, you'll look great on set every day still, even after 30 years. I know. They well, there's an age. example of the viewers being very kind and generous <laughs> and understanding. Yeah, we love those kinds of emails. And we'll share more about Bertha in today's show and also throughout the hour. Absolutely. Very touching. Thank you so much. Coming up for you on 7 News at 11, new